Hey there, you're watching Go Island, coming to you today from the 8th Avenue Gurdwara, where we're talking about the Kamagatu Maru. Aaron Visya Financial Go Island is brought to you by Aaron Visya Financial. Well, hello there. You are watching Go Island. We are coming to you today from a very special location, the Guru Nanak Sikh Gurdwara on 8th Avenue, because we're talking about an anniversary, the 100th anniversary of the Kamagatu Maru, the ship that tried to land in Vancouver but was denied access and set off an incident that had international ramifications, certainly changed the way Canadian law behaved at that time. And with me to tell me about it is Mrs. Saul, Paulo Saul, many of you know. And Paulo, thank you so much for inviting us here today. It's always such a wonderful visit. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about the Kamagata Maru incident. What was it? Kamagata Maru is a Japanese name for the ship that was um, given, that came here in 1914 um, to the harbor of Vancouver, May 23rd, it landed and it carried 376 passengers, mostly. There were, um, to best of my knowledge, there was about 20 Muslims on it and 12 Hindus on it. There were five uh, children and two women on board. And why were they coming and why were they denied access? They were coming because uh, India was a uh, part of British Empire and uh, most of the Sikhs had served in, in their army and uh, but all the being um, Indian, and they, they thought they were, uh, or, they, or they, they were right in thinking that they were British subject, so they can settle anywhere uh, in North America, the, um, being the British subject. But uh, only they found out when they got here that they were denied entry uh, with some other uh, policies that had put in place after they started to sail. And this is the policy, I believe, of continuous passage. They had to be making a continuous journey. Right. This law was only made for just to stop the Indians from entering. It was not there in place before they started to sail. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they were denied access, and this was a long process. I believe it took several months mm -hmm. in Vancouver before they were turned back. What happened to, to those passengers? Um, when they were turned back, when they went back to India, they were, uh, some of them were shot and killed, um, and others were arrested. So this was a very, very dark page in Canadian history, but it resulted in some positive changes to Canadian law. Uh, yes, the, um, I guess they uh, learned that um, this is kind of, I, I think it, it had a lot to do with changing the, the immigration policies. It just came to the public eye how unfair it was to some people because uh, on the same year, they had uh, accepted uh, hundreds and thousands of uh, um, immigrants from Europe. So it just, people were, I think more, they were, became more aware of it. And I think it really helped to change the immigration, Canadian immigration policies. I think it did too, and you know, since we were invited to come here today, I've, I've been reading about this, it really is an amazing story of tenacity and courage, not just by these immigrants, by the, but by the subsequent immigrants, so many people who came from India to make Canada their home. And we've got lots more to tell you about. There's a Port Alberni connection, and there is a celebration that you're going to want to take part in on Sunday. But before we tell you about that, we're going to talk a bit about our local history at McLean. <laughs> Well, welcome back. You are still watching Go Island. We are still talking about the 100th anniversary of the Kamagatu Maru incident, a very tragic incident in Vancouver, in BC, in Canada, that changed the way immigration laws treated Indians in Canada. And I told you a little bit before the last story that there is a Port Alberni connection, and to tell us about that is Mike McDowell. Uh, about a day before the ship was supposed to arrive in Vancouver area, uh, two gentlemen from the Vancouver area uh, came across, took a train here to on the EN uh, to Port Alberni, uh, and trying to uh, have efforts to try to bring the ship actually here to Port Alberni. Now, for whatever reason, whether it was administrative, this was a small port, the same continuous passage laws weren't being enforced here. They weren't 
they weren't enforcing continuous passage at this port of entry. No, I don't believe so. That's the thing. Um, and, you know, I mean, there are British citizens. That was the, the big thing. And, uh, you know, unfortunately and fortunately, Port Alberni is kind of that happy little nook on the Pacific coast that a lot of people forget about. And uh, these two gentlemen coming from Vancouver knew that. And they actually uh, took a boat down towards Banfield and tried to uh, make uh, contact with the vessel uh, through the Banfield uh, telegraph station. Now at that point though, uh, I guess some some other gentleman from the government uh, caught wind of it and they decided to follow them down uh, and in the end uh, they actually, it turns out they didn't really, there was kind of confusion whether the message went out or not and uh, the gentleman came back from Banfield, came back to Port Alberni and there's a nice piece actually again in our archives uh, that have a bit of an interview with the two gentlemen uh, why they were doing it and so on. So unfortunately contact was never really made between the ship and, and the two gentlemen trying to bring them into Port Alberni but it'd be amazing to think what would have happened if they actually done that, so. Absolutely, in fact, it could have been an entire tragedy averted. It was a tragedy, though, I'm gonna say this one more time, that forced changes in Canadian law, and that's something worth celebrating, and there is a celebration coming up on Sunday, right here at the Gurdwara on 8th Avenue. But before we tell you about that, we're gonna send you to another story. Well, hello again. You're still watching Go Island. We are still here at the Guru Nanak Sikh Society on 8th Avenue talking about the Kamagatu Maru incident that happened 100 years ago in May 1914. And we've been hearing about the Port Alberni connection. We've been hearing a description of what happened, why all of these people were turned back, were sent back to India, many of them to, to death, some of them to imprisonment, and how it changed Canadian immigration laws. But we're going to talk to one more person, Tar Bing, who's going to tell us a little bit about where things stand today, because there were changes made, but there weren't enough changes made. Uh, definitely, there weren't uh, enough changes made. I think any time when we have laws that are trying to exclude people from, if they're from their color, based on their color or religion, the law is obviously wrong. And uh, we have come a long way. This is a beautiful, most best co country in the world to live. Um, I'm proud to be a Canadian, and I've been here a long, long time. <laughs> and this Gurdwara on 8th Avenue is holding a celebration, a social justice event of sorts, on Sunday to mark this anniversary. What's happening here? We have, uh, first of all, we're going to have uh, like a photo, uh, photos or slideshow. Then we'll have speakers from the Kamagara Maru Society in Vancouver, where they're based. They will bring their whole show up here, and then the speakers will be here. Uh, and, and they'll put a lot more light on the incident than we can at now, because obviously we don't have the resources here. But uh, they will be able to share with the, all the public. All of Port Alberni is welcomed. Uh, from 11 o'clock onwards on Sunday. And uh, I'm sure it'll be very informative for people to know what happened and then and uh, make sure we as a society are united and uh, and the Canada represent Canada the way it should be done. And, and it is it is the best country, so I can't beat it enough times. <laughs> and I want to point out something that um, you haven't mentioned yet. There's going to be lunch afterwards, and it's a few years since I've had lunch downstairs. This is going to be very good food afterwards, isn't it? Yeah, it is always. Every Sunday up here, we have after the services um, between 12, 30, 1 o'clock. There's a lunch served. It's free to everybody and anybody and nobody's barred and nobody's uh, excluded from it. And you can just come and join the lunch if you want. And if you don't wanna be involved upstairs, that's what I'm talking about every week now, but uh, especially at this, uh, this Sunday and uh, please, everybody should come. Tara, thank you so much for telling me about it. Thank you to everyone who's talked to us about it today. This is going to be a very special event. If you are a student of social justice, if you are inter interested in social justice, if you are just a historian interested in the past and the changes that could have been made if that ship had made a single turn and come up the Alberni Inlet instead of going into the Burrard, stop by on Sunday, 11 o'clock, right here at the Gurdwara on 8th Avenue. Now we're gonna be back and give you a little bit more instructions about that, but first we're gonna tell you one more story.
Well, that does bring us to the end of another Go Island. But before I say goodbye, we are going to give you just a little bit more information because I know you're going to want to take part in this celebration on Sunday at 11 o'clock right here at the Gurdwara on 8th Avenue. And you may have noticed I'm wearing a headscarf. People that come are going to have to wear headscarves. Definitely, we have uh, scarves here too. But if someone wants to bring, they can bring their own. And we have two doors. One is on the side, one is on the front. So both goes to the main premises, main congregation hall. So we have a food, pakoda, samosa. So please come and join us. Now, you didn't see my feet. I've got my shoes on now because I'm outside, but you'll also have to take your shoes off. Exactly. We have to take our shoes off and socks off and just cover your head. That's it. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. There will be assistance at the front. If, if you're a little bit confused, if you don't quite know how to tie your headscarf, somebody will be there to help exactly. you. Exactly. We have three volunteers on both doors, so they will help you. Doors are open at 9 o'clock. Um, the speakers begin, the ceremony begins at 11 o'clock. Yes, exactly. We have a few uh, religious Shabbat Kirtan at 10 to 11, and the Kamagata Maru information starts at 11. Excellent. I'm going to be there. Thank you so much for telling us about it. I'm going to bring my own headscarf again, although our camera person looked pretty good in his own headscarf that was provided here. Until we meet again, be good to each other. Aaron Vissia Financial Go Island is brought to you by Aaron Vissia Financial, supporting community and providing personalized advice and service to clients since 1996. Our team is ready to help you with your financial future.